building, the tension's building. This is your grand final to decide the champion. Still in there. Told him a point. He has been in first kick. Oh, jump, jump. Oh, jump, yeah. jump. The best Street Fighter Five player in the world. Welcome to the World Warriors of Capcom Cup. My name is Ultra David. And I'm James Chen. How's everybody going? Let's continue talking about the players who are going to be at Capcom Cup, which will take place uh, Friday through Sunday, December 8th through 10th at the Anaheim Hilton and then at PlayStation Experience. Mm -hmm. You know, we talked about the upper half of the bracket before. Right. If you're seeing this and you haven't seen that other one, there's a whole other video where we've yeah. talked about the first 16 play. Oh, first 15, 15 players. 15 players. That's right. Yes. We don't know who the 16th is because that's going to be decided at the last chance qualifier. Yes. Mm -hmm. But for the lower half, we do have 16 mm -hmm. players to talk about. Mm -hmm. and, and it starts off big time, right? <laughs> uh, let's just jump into it. So the first matchup will be Tokido. Versus Ricky Ortiz. <laughs> this is a this story is, matchup, yeah, folks. This is veterans. These are yes. two veterans. I mean, both of these players, I still remember seeing at Evo 2002. There you go. You know, and even, actually, even before that, at B5, both of them were there, too. There so. you go. They've been around forever. And uh, Tokido, you know, plays Akuma in this game. You won Evo. You won you Evo. Won Evo. Yes, yes. Uh, he and and it wasn't even just this year that he did well. In Street Fighter Five Season One, he began Season One by consistently making Grand Finals. He lost to Infiltration a couple of times. It's like he, that was the only person he lost to for like three tournaments. Right. In a row. Yeah. Right. Uh, Ultimately, he did beat Infiltration yes. though. Mm -hmm. uh, so he had a great first half of last year. Unfortunately for him, Capcom Cup last year was a disaster. Mm -hmm. He went zero and two, winless. At last Capcom Cup, uh, but this year top eight at every event he attended except for four, and he attended a lot of them. Right, and of course the big Evo win is yeah. the biggest of the year. Right, because it's funny because like a lot of the people we say oh had top eight except for three or two. One of those is always Evo because the the, the field is just so strong. Not for Tokido. Right, he didn't make four, but he won Evo. So right. you know, yeah. <laughs> I mean, look. There's always conversation about who is the, maybe the most overall strongest fighting game player of all time. Right. You know, people like to talk about that kind sure. of thing. I mean, we have like a pretty legit answer in Tokido. <laughs> I think so too. I think that's I think that's hard to beat for sure. Yeah. Uh, again, one of the best players in in many many different games, uh, continuing to do it. Mm -hmm. Many of the other people we talk about when it comes to who's the best player ever, many of those guys are that was last decade. <laughs> to, to be frank, but this guy is still doing it. Yeah, uh, so. still one of the strongest. And honestly, when you're trying to compare to Tokido, it's really hard to measure up to him. Ooh, boy! Yeah, one, <laughs> one of the best showmen of all time yes, as well. Uh -huh. right? It's not just the gameplay, which is fantastic. It's, yeah. it's the show outside of it. Yeah, this is a guy who the Murder Face nickname he gave himself. <laughs> yeah, he did. Previous to that, he was the Ice Man. Previous to that, he was Dirty Tokido. Yeah. He's had. Several Tokido poses, you right. know. <laughs> so this guy, I mean, he he's a genius. He's literally a genius. He got to Tokyo University, and he's just such a smart and talented player. Mm -hmm. And honestly, one of my favorite fighting game players probably of all time. So. I am, I'm totally with you. But mm -hmm. I have a lot of respect and admiration for Ricky Ortiz as well. Oh, yeah. From the U.S., lived on both sides of both of our big coasts, mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. although now still uh, on, on the West Coast. Um, you know, one of the best ever in many different games as well. Made EVO Grand Finals before, a couple of different games. Mm -hmm. Has won a ton of very big tournaments in a bunch of different games. Um, has hit storied history going back to playing against Tokido as well, <laughs> among other, uh, other uh, players. In Season 1 for Street Fighter V, had some success, but of course the biggest bit of success yes. was getting second place at last year's yeah. Capcom Cup. Grand Finals there as well. And in fact, that's why she's in the tournament, because... Correct. The grand fight. The champion was supposed to come back. Uh, Knuckle Dew unfortunately cannot make it anymore. So Ricky Ortiz, by the rules stated, uh, is going to take that spot. Right. And uh, I mean, it, it's 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 interesting. It's hard for me to talk about Ricky Ortiz in a lot of ways because I have known her forever. I've known her forever. I, I she used to be the enemy because she was on <laughs> East Coast for a while. She be our right. best MVC two player, which was Alex Vai at the time, and you know, so she was the enemy. But like just throughout the years, I've just seen so much growth and so much 
you know, talent from this player. For sure. Like, it, it's, it, you know, it's hard for me to talk about this player without getting, like, super emotional oh, and stuff boy. like that. In fact, one of my first tournament wins ever was a team tournament with Ricky as my team partner. So Wow, that's funny. <laughs> my first ever tournament win, the first tournament I ever won, was over Ricky Ortiz. <laughs> That's uh, really funny. Yeah, I didn't know that. That's funny. Uh, in a different game, though. Not yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, you know, she she did take most of this year off for, mm-hmm. for personal mm-hmm. reasons. So we don't have that same success for her this year. We haven't yeah. seen it. That's not to say that she can't bring it. Dude, last year, even she admitted that like right before Capcom Cup, like two weeks before Capcom Cup, is when she really started digging in and, and practicing and got second place and you know being a player as talented as she is you know she's gotten word that she's going to be in Capcom Cup like two weeks beforehand she was also entered in the last chance qualifiers so right. she's been practicing this right. whole entire way so I would not underestimate her in any way shape or form like I, I feel like she has the ability to be an upset against a lot of people now first match of Tokido tough one but we'll see yeah we'll see we'll see all right let's talk about the next one who went 0-2 last year and who got the second place last year right right there you go (laughs) so the next one is going to be Gachikun versus Goichi two Japanese players Gachikun with Rashid Mm -hmm. he was a strong player in Street Fighter 4 had one of the best Sagats most interesting Sagats I I felt didn't travel that much in season one for Street Fighter Mm 5 he was playing online quite a bit uh, but didn't actually travel around all that much in this year he was invited out to Red Bull Kumite, mm-hmm. and he got second place. Yep. Only to know. Right. And after that, realized, I'm pretty good, actually. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I should be traveling around. Right. And, uh-huh. and, and uh-huh. after that, uh, even though he really only had half the season to qualify, uh, he did, because he did so well after that point. Yeah. And uh, again, it's interesting, too, because Gachikun is actually one of only two players here who isn't sponsored at Capcom mm-hmm. Cup. So I'm like, well, what's going on here? You know, okay. got to pick this guy up. But obviously... Very, very strong player, and, you know, again, part of that group of Rashids. We have three three main very strong Rashids in here, yeah. so I expect to see some great stuff out of that character. It was confusing to me at first when he went from Sagat to Rashid. That seemed like a strange choice to me mm-hmm. originally, but now that we understand Rashid more, even aside from his buffs in Season 2, we, just, we understand the character better. I, I see it. I think it mm-hmm. makes a lot of sense. I love the idea for somebody to switch characters like that. I, I think it fits in very, very well. Just using the CBS2 Sagat strategies, right? Gotcha. <laughs> Actually, yeah. <definitely. laughs> Why not? Uh, and then Goichi. So <sighs> Goichi is is a player who didn't play the Street Fighter series terribly much until mm-hmm, Street Fighter mm-hmm. Five, but had a lot of success, did very, very well in mm-hmm. many other different games. He came into it uh, and and almost immediately became one of the best Street Fighter Five players. Yeah, I was using Chun-Li. And was dominating a lot. Yeah. And then as soon as season two started, you know, Chun Li got a little weaker, and so all of a sudden Goichi went to Ibuki, and everyone's like, okay, they're using the strong characters. But then, <laughs> then Manat came out. Yeah. And I don't know what happened, but there was something about Manat and Goichi. Goichi just saw this character, and everything clicked. Yeah. And my God, like right now, watching his Manat is just like one of my favorite things. It, yeah, definitely. Uh, you're right that he he plays the strong characters, right? Uh-huh, this is not uh-huh. somebody who who picks bad matchups for himself, <laughs> um, which is a smart trade if you're trying to win tournaments, and and he is. So I like. It's interesting to me that he picks Manat in some matchups uh-huh, because uh-huh. I think that's a tell that that character is pretty strong too. Right? <laughs> uh, one of the new season two DLC right, characters, right. and he's really making it work. But it's interesting because nobody else has had this kind mm. of success. Like I feel like there's just. He understands that character. I, there was just a clip that I saw recently where he activated V Trigger against an Akuma who started throwing a fireball. And he just launched four orbs in the perfect timing. And the first orb ate the fireball, and the other three comboed on him when he got a jump heavy punch into two more orbs. Dang. And then it was, and even okay. he was getting hyped. Like, this is not <laughs> an online match. When he did, he was like, oh yeah, oh yeah. He was All like, right. getting. But like, there's just, he has a connection with that character, and I'm I so excited because. Manat, to me, right now, is one of my favorite characters of Season 2. And and so now Goichi, obviously, is one of my favorite players to watch. Sure. And I really want to see him just rip through some people with this character yeah. at Capcom Cup. I'm excited. Well, of course, he's keeping around the Ibuki and the Chun-Li, yeah, too. So he's course, got different matchups to, to show. Mm-hmm. Then let's talk about the next matchup we have, which is going to be Bonchan versus Smug. Bonchan from Japan plays Karen now... 
in Street Fighter 4, he played Sagat, of course, and was one of the best Sagat players in the world. Mm -hmm. um, in Season 1, for Street Fighter 5, he did well. Lots of top 5s, lots of top 3s. It was with Nash. Mm -hmm. In Street Fighter 5 Season 2, he started with Nash. He stuck with Nash. Yeah, yeah, he did. He was known as the last Nash for a while. Because he was. not only was he sticking with him, but he was doing really well. Yes. And last year, he, there was one sequence where Bonchan was like invincible for like four weeks. Like he won a bunch of stuff in a row. And then this year, he won two majors in a row with uh, Nash. And so everyone was like, whoa, maybe we underestimated, you know, the character and everything like that. So Bonch and, and in fact, at EVO, he had to play MOV Chun-Li. So right. at ninth play spot to get in the top eight at EVO. So either Nash or Chun-Li was going to make a top eight. Right. And that was after getting sent to the loser's bracket, basically his first match. You know, because uh, yeah, just the first, first and second match overall, yeah, right? So yeah. the person that he played, Andy OCR, who's a SoCal Bison player, yeah. uh, played his first match, but one round before nice Bonchan. Then he played Bonchan and sent him to losers, and Bonchan still almost made it into top eight at Evo. It's a long road with but, Nash. Yeah, you know? he's a talented fellow, yeah. but he has switched to Karen recently. Still, right, mm -hmm. still thought that he had to switch. Um, I have heard that he plans to switch back yeah, after uh, uh, the year's over. We'll see if that happens. Yeah, he said basically once this year's over, uh, he'll switch either back to Nash or, you know, he's hoping for that Sagat. <laughs> no, we'll see. We'll see. His opponent's going to be smug from the U.S. with Balrog, with the boxer. Um, you know, young player, one of the best Street Fighter Four players towards the end of it. Best Dudley in the world for sure. Yeah. In, in Street Fighter Four. In Street Fighter Four. Oh, in Four. In Four. Yeah, yeah. yeah sorry. Uh, <laughs> yeah. He, uh, in, in Street Fighter Five Season One, he didn't travel terribly much. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right? When he did, he did well, but he didn't travel all that much. Then in this year, he traveled way more. Yeah. Oh, and yeah, yeah, and yeah. he made top eight, top five, even at almost everything that he went to. Yeah. Uh huh. He's he's kind of good. He's. I mean, yes. look, it's 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 one of those situations, right? Like he played Dudley, and he made Dudley look broken in Street Fighter Four. And Dudley wasn't necessarily one of the strongest characters yeah. in that game, but because of him, everyone was like, oh my god, this character's so good. <laughs> right, yeah. Right, you know, and he got known for his combos. We've said this on commentary a million times. It's really his fundamentals yes. that help him win. And so when he has a character like Balrog, a lot of people consider Balrog pretty crazy and, you know, but he plays him in such a strong, solid, fundamental wall kind yeah. of way and to combine that with the damage output that uh, that Balrog can't see, now I'm doing it, that Balrog can actually uh, have, you know, that's what makes it even more dangerous. That's how he's going to defeat you with the greatest of ease. Yeah, well, he's going to defeat you uh, outside of the match, too, if you can't uh, handle that personality. <laughs> you know? he, can be, he can be quite a little handful. Yeah, <laughs> dude. On the stage. Oh, God, I love it. I love it. <laughs> Like, every time it's him, Punk, and Knuckle Dew yeah. on the stage, and just their interactions, yeah. you know, like, Smug, I mean, there's a reason why he's as popular as he is. Not only was, you know, his Dudley that scary back, you yeah. know, in Street Fighter 4, and the combos are so great and everything like that, but he is just a joy to watch. For he's sure. just one of the funnest people to even hang around and talk to. That's true. You know yeah, what I mean? Like, he's, he's hilarious, and a lot of it is... Really not just like, hey, I'm going to be a showman. Like, that's just legit how he is. Yeah, that's true, actually. <laughs> uh, then the next match we have is going to be Fudo versus Momochi. <laughs> Very, uh, yeah, this could be a grand finals, right? Why right. Not? Uh, <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, I know. So, Fudo from Japan with Armika. I really think he's one of the best fighting game players ever, overall. Mm -hmm. um, I thought that in Street Fighter Four he had the best footsies in the world mm -hmm. for, for quite a while. He got... You know, very strong success last year. He was second at EVO in Street Fighter V Season 1. After his first two tournaments that he entered, he made 22, uh, uh, 12 consecutive top 8s, I should say. And then between last year and this year, if you sort of combine the two, uh -huh. he made 22 consecutive top 8s. <laughs> From all the events that he attended. He's going to a lot of things, right? He's going to a lot of events. But it's not like he's, you know, mentally skipping out on any of right. He's showing uh, up, he's consistent, he, he's so strong, so consistent. I mean, you know, it's, it's funny because a lot of these players who are good, you know, we've talked about they're great at fighting games, etc., etc. Fudo just has a talent for playing video games. Like, there is a, another game in Japan, it's like a gun game, arcade game, mm. and he's like the national champion of that game as well. Like, it's, it's just, it's ridiculous, this man's brain... 
It was just like made for gaming. You know what he has said about his own style is that his biggest, his best attribute is that he has amazing reactions. Mm -hmm. And you can see he reacts sometimes to one crouching short hitting into yeah. a super. He will kick in front of the stand fierce by itself. Right, right. Uh, he just has has insane reactions on top of all the other fundamentals mm -hmm. involved. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So then Momochi from Japan, of course, uh, maining Ken. We'll see what anything else happens there, but probably expecting Ken. You know, again, one of the best players of all time in multiple different Street Fighters. Uh, he won EVO. He won Capcom Cup. And, well, he won Capcom Cup and then EVO, like, immediately yes. within the six-month span, so... In Street Fighter Four, mm -hmm. Lots of strong placings in Street Fighter Five Season 1 mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. as well. For a while, I remember, we thought he might be the best player. Oh, yeah. There was a little uh, period, uh, period of time in there where he seemed like he was the strongest. In Street Fighter Five Season 2 in 2017, he has still had some good showings, but it w I wouldn't say that we have thought he's the best player. Yeah, I mean, well, to be honest with you, I feel like you know he's been to a lot of events, but he's definitely has a lot of focus in other areas right sure. now. You know, one thing that he's been trying to do a lot in Japan, for example, is Japan. You know, the concept of esports not as prominent in Japan, so he's been doing a lot to promote that through his Shinobiism school. Right. In fact, it's still thought of in Japan that as a kid to play video games you're wasting your time this is not going to amount to anything and he started the shinobiism school with his partner Choco Blanca and they're teaching a bunch of young kids in fact in 2016 they brought a bunch of those players over to Evo to play yeah. he's still training them and he's trying to show that you know there is this path of esports that getting good at video games is a true talent and can actually amount to something you yeah. know and keep in mind they organize events as well which is a yeah. very Time intensive thing to be doing. Yeah, so Japan Cup, which took place last year, which was one of the premier, one of the only premieres in Japan. Yeah, he organized it, so he couldn't enter it. Right. That's one of the reasons why he has fewer points. Yeah, this, because you're he talking could, about this year. Yeah, this year. Yeah, yeah, this year. So he couldn't even enter the the the, the premiere in Japan, where he could have easily gotten like a hundred, two hundred points. Sure. You know, for himself, because the organizers aren't allowed to play in that. So indeed. Well, let's move on and talk about the next matchup, which is going to be Yukodon versus Didi Mokov. Didi so, Mokov, Yukodon nice. with uh, Ibuki now from Japan, of course. Yes. He was a good Street Fighter 4 player, had a good Viper. He broke out, though, in C SF5 Season 1 with third place at EVO mm -hmm. using Nash. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. Extremely strong Nash player. He then did well the rest of the year. In, in Season 2, he won two majors in a row pretty recently. Yes, yes. Doing super well with the boogie. Like at SCR, and there was another major over there. Mm -hmm. And honestly, uh, I he since Knuckle Dude dropped out, he is third seed now. Mm -hmm. And you know, a lot of people again, I don't know what it is. Like, there's just some players that kind of go under the radar sometimes, like that. And I feel like Yukodon's one of them. Yeah, I feel like he has so much potential to win this. Like, I think he's really, really scary right now. And. Um, Especially with the way that he's been playing Abuki, he's been even busting out new tricks that people haven't seen right. before. Where he's like using the bomb and uppercutting over it. <laughs> yeah. and all this, this is crazy stuff. So who knows how many more nasty tricks that he has up his sleeve at this point in time? Yeah, we'll, we'll see. His opponent is going to be somebody uh, that we don't get to see very often. Okay, he's going to be Didi Mokoff from Brazil. Uh, Dalsum is the character that he qualified with. Uh, he has been playing for a long time. Not a new guy, but mm -hmm. he it's it's. Tougher for him to travel internationally. Yeah, of course, of course. From Brazil. From Brazil. Um, that said, this year he's had a lot of top eights, some ninth places. But yeah. again, he didn't, wasn't able to go to many things. But the things that he did go to, he did well at. Right. And, and you know, it's, it's interesting because, uh, I mean, again, I, I just kind of want to talk about the, the Brazil stuff right now because every year a Brazilian has made it. Right. Every year a Brazilian has made it, but it's always been one. So this is the first year that two Brazilians have made it, and I think that's fantastic. For sure. I think it's fantastic. And you know, every year it's been a different Brazilian, right? So, I mean, you can almost kind of count Dimokov as the as the representative this year because Brolinho is the repeat now. Yeah, <laughs> you of know? course, Brolinho and Dimokov are, are both in there. It's a very strong scene. Yes. And, and uh, uh, certainly, I think, deserving of having multiple people in here. And it's, very, it's growing, too. Like, they are doing so much work to try to grow that scene, and so it's really exciting to see Brazil consistently being represented and this year getting two representatives. I think that's super cool. I'm with you. He he qualified not by points, but because he won yeah, the Latin right. American yeah, uh, uh. regional finals. Right. Right. Had to beat Kaba to do it. Very, very right. strong player from the Dominican Republic. But he did. 
Right. And he looked he looked good. He had some really good, really strong stuff. Right. So uh, in case people are wondering how that works, you know, if you win a regional last chance, uh, regional finals, yeah. you automatically make it in there regardless of points. You know, the, 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 the assumption was that most likely if you had won that, you would have enough points and you'd automatically qualify. In the case of Dinimakov, that was not the case. Right. So he has made it up there, but he will be uh, on the lower end of the seating. Yeah, very cool. See how he does up there. Mm -hmm. Let's also talk about our next matchup, which is Oil King versus Snake Eyes. The Oil King from Taiwan plays Rashid. He's a newer player. You know, he hasn't been playing for, for super long. He did have some success in Street Fighter V Season 1. He actually got 13th at EVO. Mm -hmm. that, that year. Yeah, I mean, when you talk about the fact that he's a new player, I asked GamerB one time, because he's from Taiwan, right? right? So uh, I was hanging out with him, and I asked where Oil King came from, and he got that nickname because he plays Rashid. Right. It's like a pretty <laughs> recent thing. <laughs> right, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Uh -huh. But, uh, you know, again, he, he picked it up quickly. He got 13th last year at EVO. Uh, and then more success this year. He traveled more. Yeah. Several big top eights. Uh, he won FV Cup. Right, mm -hmm. he, he, I think, is in a really strong position. Yeah, and it's exciting for me because, you know, Gamer B, obviously, EVO 2010, he made the big splash onto the scene. He's been strong ever since. Sure. He didn't make it this year. Right. He didn't make it in the Capcom Cup, but Oil King has. And so, you know, it, it, it shows that that Taiwan scene is still strong, you know, that they have the torch to be able to pass right. down to. And uh, someone like Oil King is ready to take that up and... Uh, and, uh, you know, I want to make a fire oil burning joke, but you know what? Let's skip that. Let's it's just... It's not All right, right. <laughs> let's talk about Snake Eyes from the U.S., of course, from Southern California. Uh, well, California, maybe more accurately now. Yeah. Uh, uh -huh. <laughs> playing Zangief and Akuma. Which is a big deal. Yeah, I think it is a big deal. So he... This is a guy who won the first major tournament he ever went to, which was Evolution. <laughs> <laughs> he won the uh, HDR, and, right? Yeah, Super yeah, Street uh, Fighter II Turbo HD Remix. Uh -huh. Um he was a top Street Fighter Four Zangief player. He was mm -hmm. probably the best for quite some time, at least in the U.S. Uh, he did well, but made, I would say, relatively few top eights in Street Fighter Five Season 1. In Season 2, he definitely did much better. He won CEO, yeah. for example. Uh, he made quite a few big top eights. Mm -hmm. But after the summer... So only attended a few events. Yeah, he's really been keeping under the radar. He's trying to do what Daigo kind of did last year. If you remember, Daigo like made it into Capcom Cup and was like, "I'm just not going to show off." Or well, that might have even been two years I think it was ago. A little while ago. Two years. Yeah, yeah. Daigo did something of that nature, and and I think Snake Eyes is trying to do a lot of that right now. He's trying to keep himself hidden, but. To be honest with you, I really think the key to Snake Eyes' success recently has been that Akuma addition mm. to his roster. And it's not just because Zangief can't handle a lot of things. It's because Street Fighter V, again, very different game than IV. Sure. And he was trying to play Zangief like Street Fighter IV Zangief. When he switched to Akuma, he learned more Street Fighter V strategies. And, in fact, the way he played Akuma sometimes even looked Zangief-ish, you know? He's very, very Rush Grappler-looking. Yeah, uh-huh. Yeah. And, and he was able to take that, and I feel like that Akuma, learning Akuma, made his Zangief better. Interesting. Uh, I really do credit a lot of that to that. So uh, I expect him to do well, but, I, look, the last time hey. Daigo tried to hide all of his techniques, it didn't really work out for yeah, him. Yeah, man. So we'll, we'll see how that we'll goes. See. This is something somebody tries every year. And yeah. Really uh, so then... Let's talk about a very interesting matchup between Dogura and Luffy. Now, Dogura from Japan, uh, you know, he's been one of the best players in the world in other games before. Mm -hmm. In Street Fighter 4, he was a good player. In Street Fighter 5, he made some top 8s in Season 1, but not, like, major success. Right. Mm -hmm. This season, he picked up Urien. Uh, he did well in the first half of the year, but, you know, not again, not <laughs> fantastically. Right. I mean, we mentioned this in the first video, but, like, I honestly felt like Dogura was really like chasing Nemo's shadow. Yeah. Like, he was he was Nemo like he, like he was just like I'm this cool Yurian. I'm not Nemo. Yeah, but, no, like, Nemo seemed like he was the best. But yeah. uh man, Dogra has really stepped up. He won two majors in a row. Cap, uh, Canada Cup and Taiwan Fighter Major, mm -hmm. uh, extremely strong. Yeah, and when he won that Taiwan Fighter Major, you know, again, this is a player who has had success Constantly, you mm. know, grand finals at Evo and other games and such sure. like that. You know, it's constant success. And when he won the Taiwan majors, he cried. Like, he was very emotional about it. His team was, you know, swarming him, and he got very emotional about it. So you know how much this means to him, and right. you know how much, how, 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 you know, 
how much it means to be able to take a win in that kind of stack tournament, especially that coming that close to Capcom Cup. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. His opponent is going to be Luffy from France. He plays Armiga. This is a guy who won Evo. He was the first European, first not East not, Asian. Not born actually. in Asia. Um, yeah, not born in Asia. <laughs> yeah, yeah. To, uh, uh, to win Evo in, in Street Fighter. Mm -hmm. uh, and he did it in 2014. Tons of success in Street Fighter V Season 1, Yeah, right? Traveled a lot, did really well, had a great season for himself. In Season 2, again, lots of consistent success. He's traveling, he's making a bunch of top 8s, he's, yeah. he's fish, finishing high up in, in brackets. Yeah, he's I mean, he's done it with a character that I wouldn't have expected out of him as well. It's very different right? than his Street Fighter four, 4 Rose. Right, and uh, it's interesting because, again, you know consistent players like Luffy is one of the most oh, consistent sure. ones and again you know we talk about like it's weird to say two players like Cien and whatever are underrated or whatever like that but Luffy I feel like has always been kind of in that category because yeah. when he won Evo with Rose everyone was like oh the character you know right. blah 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 which whatever. yeah which is nonsense right <laughs> but like honestly he is so talented he's so good and in fact uh, at the Red Bull Tower of Pride, which we mentioned in the previous video, he got second place to Kazunoko. Yeah, you know, just so, very recently. Yeah, very recently. So he's right there. He, in fact, he's never left. No, he's, he's never really left. He's never just, left. He's, he's been there. Mm -hmm. uh, I think he's he's definitely a big threat, of course, as he always is. The last matchup to talk about is Verloren from Korea versus Mago from Japan. Mm -hmm. Now, Verloren with Kami, he traveled a bit in Street Fighter Five Season One. Some success, not a ton. In season two, he went. He got at least ninth place. Many of them top eights, but at least mm -hmm. ninth place at everything he went to this year, with the exception of two events. He got ninth at Evo, <laughs> <laughs> right? Right. Uh huh. Uh -huh. And so he had he had a great year. Yeah, and, and again, you know, this is this is really the effect. Like infiltration's not in the tournament this year, right? But. This is his effects, okay. right? Because if you remember last year, after he won Evo, he, you know his performance did drop a little bit, mm. and you know a lot of it really did come also from the fact that he began a mentoring role. Mm -hmm. Because at that time during Evo, it was really him and Punko from Korea, this huge country of nothing but professional gamers all <laughs> over the place, and there was really only two Street Fighter players, you know, mm. from there, and he took it upon himself. To train a bunch of people, including you know fellow Cami player NL, uh, Birdie player X Y Z Z Y, you right. know a whole bunch of people, and as well as Ver Lauren, and that's when they started showing themselves up uh, towards the end last year, and then this year to see that infiltrations, you know, teaching and you know helping them train and everything like that. You know, okay, Infiltration didn't make it. He got married. You know, he's very busy with his personal life and everything. But boom, look, Ver Lauren is right here in that spot. You know, Looking almost good. kind of to represent team Infiltration. You know? Okay. <laughs> All right. I like that. Then, last player to mention is Mago. Again, from Japan. Right. Uh, the 2D god. Yeah. The he calls himself. The only other player besides Gachakun who is not sponsored. Here. Ah, interesting. Interesting. Yeah. Has mm -hmm. been in the past, of course. Uh, long time top player, many different mm -hmm, games. Mm -hmm. um, extremely strong in, for example, Street Fighter Four. He was one of the best Sagats. He was one of the best Fei Longs. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, he picked up Yang. Yeah. Uh, this is somebody who who almost always picks strong characters. Yeah. Right? He doesn't uh -huh. saddle himself with bad characters. Yang is as worse as he's ever right. done, I mean, and I'm, even that was not bad. And honestly, like a lot of people used to consider him just a player <clears throat> who who kind of profited off of strong characters. That's true. But I felt like with that Yang pick that he had in Street Fighter 4, he really kind of shut down a lot of the doubters yeah. out there because he did super well with that. In fact, it was probably one of the most comfortable that I've seen Mago play. Yeah. Like, it felt like he was able to express himself the way he wanted to using that character. And I think that's benefited with okay. his care and play. Yeah, absolutely right. Uh, he had first places last year in mm -hmm. Street Fighter Five Season mm -hmm. One with Karen. He he was thought of as the best Karen in the world for for quite some time. Yeah. The last last year, I think now he's been eclipsed by Punk. Many yeah. people would say, <laughs> but but even still, extremely strong. Uh, he made lots of top eights this year too. Uh, not quite as much success, but but still doing mm -hmm. doing well for himself. Um, the interesting thing is, like towards the end of the year. He started adding Rashid ah, yes. to his repertoire. And, uh, you know... Why yeah, not? Yeah, again, you know, as we said, he likes the... He, he gives himself as much of the advantages as he can. Yeah. Right? Rashid is a very strong character, and I think that kind of fits his style. If he comes yeah. in here with a Karen and a Rashid... 
team. That's a good team. That he could switch around between players and give different looks to. Remember, this is three out of five the whole entire way. You have room right. to experiment. That's true. You have room to experiment. So coming into this tournament with two, Karen and Rashid is a, is a good, is a good, <laughs> good team. Yeah, it's a good set of characters to have. So. All right. Well, that's our <laughs> roster of players. Yep. Mm -hmm. Again, we know 31 out of the 32. We have yet to decide the last chance qualifier. That will take place on December uh, 8th, Friday, December 8th, right. at the Anaheim Hilton. Mm -hmm. um, then the top 32 will take place the following day, Saturday, December 9th. Uh, you can watch those on twitch.tv slash Capcom Fighters and twitch.tv slash Capcom Fighters 2, mm -hmm. and they are free to come hang out and watch in person. Right, exactly. But of course, if you want to visit the PlayStation Experience, which is where, you know, right, taking place right next to it, you're going to have to get a ticket for that also for Sunday in order to watch the top eight. Right, that's when the finals are going to be the top eight, like you say. Mm -hmm. That will be streamed on twitch.tv slash Capcom Fighters Sunday, December 10th. Mm -hmm. it starts at 2 p.m. Pacific time. That's right, and uh, it's going to be fun. It's going to be... How could it not be with this list of players? I mean, did you hear, <laughs> did you hear the names we just said? Yeah. Every match is strong. There's no fluff in here. It's, right. it's best of the best. Yeah, I mean, we, didn't even, we didn't even get a chance to talk about how we think those matchups are going to go. That's true. Which is we're going to do in the next video. Oh, yeah. So, yeah so Looking keep, forward to that. Keep an eye on, on that one. But I'm actually waiting for that more than I think anybody else. Is. Man, <laughs> we're yeah, yeah, yeah. we're uh, more excited about yeah, that. Yeah, and, and, and uh, honestly, if you like the kind of stuff that we talk about, you know, we, we've been eating, drinking Street Fighter for years now, you know, so if you like the stuff that we're doing, you can always follow us on Twitch at twitch.tv slash TV as well as twitter.com slash TV. Every Tuesday, we just do a weekly, you know, FGC news recap of what's been going on through the week, some controversial topics or whatever yeah. like that. So, yeah. And we also have our own individual streams. You're Indeed. at twitch.tv slash ultradavid. I'm at twitch.tv slash jchenzo. We play fighting games, amongst other things. We analyze matches, do all sorts of cool things like that and uh also on twitter the same handle same name yeah you can find us there so all right everybody thanks a lot for watching <laughs> it's going to be pretty crazy at capcom cup make sure that you tune in we'll see you there